Whether you're wanting all of the relic weapons or some of them because you're playing on a harder difficulty or just want the achievement or just want to use them, there are 17 relic weapons in Gears 5 and I'll show you the locations of all of them. And just remember you can trade weapons with your AI teammates, meaning they can carry these weapons throughout the act, so you can swap with them and you can also hold weapons on your skiff. Okay, so all 17 of these will be found in the free roam sections of the act and we'll be starting with Act 2. The first one is the Enforcer Relic, and it can be found right here at the far west side of the map, or at the start of Chapter 2, when you're trying to open up the first gate. You'll have to run through a rocky pathway to get to the control room, and then once you get through that path, it would be on your right. But instead of going to the main objective, we're going to take a left, where you'll see a red gear icon, which marks the spot of these relic weapons. And just below it will be the Enforcer Relic. This gun has a slower fire rate than the regular Enforcer, but deals more powerful damage. So just after getting through that gate, you can head north, up past this frozen lake, or kind of still on the frozen lake. It's also just south of the outsider camp and your main objective. Once you get there, you should find an orange boathouse. You'll see the red gear icon just outside of it up the pathway, and then inside the boathouse on the right, on top of a workbench, will be the long shot relic. If you're good with the long shot, then you will love this gun, because performing an active reload will not only give you an extra bullet, but it'll also chamber that bullet by itself. So also, if you're good at timing your active reloads, you'll probably love this weapon also. Next up, we will go grab the Retro Lancer in Chapter 4. So right after Chapter 2, you'll cross through the second gate, and just outside of it is where we'll find the Retro Lancer. You'll find sort of like a rock island right beside the frozen lake, and again, right after you come outside of that second gate. Pretty much right in front of the gear icon will be a tree, and it'll be leaning up right against it. This Lancer actually fires a form of explosive rounds, but I promise it's not as cool as it sounds. It sounds like they'd be insanely powerful, but really, they're just kind of average. It's cool, but it's not overpowered or anything like that. The next one can be found almost right on the Condor crash site. It's in the middle of the map and to the east of the Chapter 4 entrance to this part of the map. The Condor crash site has a little ice bridge that you kind of have to drive across in your skiff or run across. We're actually going to be more underneath that bridge and to the west of it. Once you get here, you should see the red gear on one of the icy rocks sticking out. Just to the right of that on the ground will be the Boltok Relic. The Boltok pistol is a secondary and has faster handling and can fire easier from the hip. So I think what that means is aiming down sights and moving around with it is faster and then firing from the hip I don't really notice much of a difference because I didn't really fire from the hip with a regular Boltok pistol I don't really see much use of that with this pistol now we'll be heading down to the abandoned mine or the entrance of the abandoned mine which is just north of the actual physical location marked on the map it's also south of the weapon that we just picked up from the crash site. But once you get there, you'll see some logs torn down everywhere and a gate. Head through that gate entrance and just ahead is where you'll see the abandoned mine. But instead, we're going to take a right and turn up the hill. And you'll see some wood structures over in this little pathway. You can walk in between these two boulders and you'll find the Torque Bow Relic. The Torque Bow Relic actually shoots pretty fast but it doesn't have the explosive bolt. So depending on how good you are at headshots, probably decides whether or not you want this weapon, because if you're not, this weapon kind of sucks compared to the regular torque bow. Next, we'll leave the southern part of the map and come more up northeast, and that question mark to the west of us is an old derrick site. So just come up here, we're kind of in the middle of the frozen lake here, not really a named location, it's more at this gigantic ice spike. On the bottom side of it, you'll see a gear question mark on the rock. Head a little bit farther down to the left of it, this one's kind of more out of the way of the gear icon than the rest of them are. But once you do get over here on the right, you will see a little pathway heading up. Just barely up there behind a rock will be the drop shot relic. So with this one, you want to hold the shoot button and then release it when you want the shot to drop and it'll drop a freeze round. It's actually a really good weapon. I just don't know if I would recommend carrying this around with you all the time. I would just throw it on your skiff. Now we will go northwest of that last location and go over to the North Tower substation. This is actually where a collectible and a side quest are, as well as the main quest being up ahead. But once you get to the substation, you're going to take a right and there will be two little buried buildings. On one of them will be the red gear icon and behind them will be the boom shot relic. And it'll fire three rounds before having to reload. Now we will be in Act 3 and you will get a chance to free roam in both Chapters 2 and Chapter 3. Right when you start off in Chapter 2, you should be left at the airstrip here, and over on our right will be three hangars. Behind us are also three hangars, so make sure you don't go to those instead. We want to be at the ones that are kind of outside of the base. And on the front of hangar number one will be a red gear icon. 
Right beside the hangar, on the other side of the gear icon, will be the Talon Relic, which is a secondary pistol. Hitting an active reload with this thing gives you increased damage and fire rate. This is actually a really good gun and probably one of the better relic weapons. Definitely the better secondary, or at least the one that has the most changes to it. Now just down the road from that last one, or southeast, this one is really in the middle of nowhere. It's along the rock wall or mountain that borders the map. Just try to look at my landmarks and position yourself there. You'll see a red gear icon on the rock wall or mountain, and right under it will be the Nasher Relic. The Nasher Relic will actually fire slug rounds, and it's a pretty good gun up close. You would think that the slug rounds had some range to them and added to the Nasher, and they kind of do, but I cannot manage to get a kill from even a decent distance. Now we are north of the Cosmonaut Training Facility which is just down the road from the one that we were just at, further southeast. There are a bunch of buildings buried out here, so make sure you go right to my marker. It's probably the building closest to the road down there. Not the road where you drive your skiff, but like the road that's buried from before. When you do get there, you should see the gear icon on the front of the building. On the opposite side of the building is the weapon, the claw relic. When you hit the active reload on the claw relic, you will get a higher rate of fire, which also means the recoil and spread narrow in faster since the bullets are firing faster. You can then head a bit more north to the pump station or right out front of the pump station because that's where we'll find the Marksa relic. When you get out here from the road, you want to push towards the rock wall. You'll see all of these cars parked out here. It's an abandoned parking lot. You'll see a gears icon on the rock wall and under it in the trunk of one of the vehicles will be the Marksa. What this one does is go full auto when you hold the trigger which really isn't that good. It's only beneficial if you're taking out enemies from far away and then all of a sudden one rolls up on you, you can hold the trigger instead, which really is not that big of a deal. We will then head southwest of that pump station and just south of the rocket hangar, which is one of the mission locations in Chapter 2. You'll be under this whole metal support system. Behind us is just an empty desert where you came from or where you should have came from. And in the corner, you should see a gear icon and beside it will be the Snub Relic. This is usually a semi-automatic pistol, but the Relic is a two-burst pistol. So it shoots two bullets each time you pull the trigger. Now further down south, where we actually had a view on this place from the last place we were at, you wanna go towards the bridge and the bridge control house. Right in front of it, in the middle of the desert here, will be a rock formation. On the front of it, you should see the red gear icon, like usual, and behind it will be the overkill shotgun relic. You'll notice that there's a box of ammo beside it as well, and it's because when you pick this up, a bunch of enemies will spawn. The overkill relic just has full auto when you hold the trigger. Now we're gonna head over to the city ruins, or pretty much just outside of the city ruins, just to the east of them. Once you get there, you should see some sort of gated in house. You can walk into the entrance of the gate, through a little gap, and you should see the gear icon already on the front of the building. Just take a hard right, go around the corner, and beside a skeleton or above a skeleton inside of a crate should be the Hammer Burst Relic. This is probably one of my favorite relics. As you probably know, the Hammer Burst is a burst rifle, but with this one, each trigger pull fires more shots than the last, so each burst will be bigger than the last burst. The only thing you need to know is to hold down the fire button if you want to actually shoot it longer, because if you just tap the trigger, it's only going to fire a short burst. You have to hold it down like you're holding it down full auto. Now, since I strayed off a bit from the original plan I had, you're going to go back up north near where one of your main objectives are at the Cosmonaut Training Facility, except more to the west of it and south of the Water Tower. Here you should see a bunch of little tunnel type things under the mountain, and they're being held up by support beams. Beside one of the middle ones, or it looks like it actually might be the middle one, since there are only three on this side, and there's one to my right and one to my left. The one on the left has a bunch of cactuses near it, and the one on the right has no cactuses around it. The Lancer Grenade Launcher Relic can be found behind it. This one is like your standard Lancer Grenade Launcher, except instead of going up into the sky, the launcher will just fire it and shoot it directly into the enemy. Now we're gonna go to the Cargo Shipwreck, which is further down south, a lot more towards the ending of the map, or the bottom of it. And at the back of the Cargo Ship, there's a bit of an opening. On the back wall of it, you can see the red gear icon. And then over on the ground, you will find the Lancer Relic. It's just the regular old OG Lancer, except it's the Relic one, and the Relic gives it the ability to butt the enemies with the end of your gun, which will stun them and allow you to chainsaw them. I tested it inside of the Cargo Ship on the robots, but it didn't really work on those guys, since obviously they don't really care. For the final relic weapon, we are going to go all the way to the bottom of the map, and it's at the Crashed Condor, which is almost all the way to that last mission objective that we had in Chapter 2. 
we have the main crash site to our left or behind us, which is its own side objective, and you can find the tail end of the plane over here with the Gears insignia on it. And then if you go over behind it, you can find the M-Bar relic. This M-Bar will charge much slower, but has a much more powerful slug. But that's pretty much it. See ya.